Well, good afternoon. This is Pastor Stephen Tant coming to you again from Life in the Cross Ministries. And uh, I'm just blessed uh, to have Pastor Paul White with me again. And uh, we're just looking forward to getting back in, in the Word. And, uh, you know, before we do, I want to kind of give Pastor Paul opportunity to kind of just uh, tell us about your website, your ministry, yeah. so that way the folks watching. I appreciate that. Uh, PaulWhiteMinistries.com uh, is our website. It's kind of the hub of everything we, we have that we're doing. I'm currently traveling mostly, itinerant, uh, place to place, sharing the good news. We do have a little uh, monthly gathering in Southern California there that we also are part of. Um, but the website is, is the home to all of our audio and our video, mm -hmm. and 99% of our material is free. So if people will go on the site, they can watch or listen to sermons probably as far back. I mean, there's stuff available from years ago mm -hmm. that's still on the site. Uh, also, Paul White Ministries on Facebook. We, mo we post all of our new stuff on there and YouTube channels. Um, but I encourage people to go take a look because uh, one of the things that was important to me when I started really ministering the gospel of grace was it was so hard to find mm -hmm. and it was never free. Right. And I really felt compelled in my spirit when you, Lord, as you give this to me, I'm going to make as much as I can of it mm -hmm. free. And so we, we have an app as well. Paul White Ministries is on the app store on your phone, and it's free. Mm -hmm. And you get, put the app on your phone, and it'll load every day. Every day we put new content. Mm -hmm. I do a deeper daily five-minute podcast where we walk through Scripture. Um, that's, that'll load to your app. And, uh, and it's free. But be blessed by the gospel of grace, man. Amen. Feed on. And, and, and you're, if you're watching, you know, uh, go make, a, make an offering. Whenever you go and get free uh, sermons and teachings, mm -hmm. you know, bless his ministry. I can tell you, you he's going to sow life into your life. And uh, you know what? Uh, give an offering. Let someone else hear this wonderful gospel of grace. I know in the ministry that things cost. And uh, I know electronics and devices that you have to provide these things, website, uh, web hosting costs. So, you know, I, I just would challenge our folk, anybody that watches uh, Life in the Cross Ministries, go out, support this brother. I can tell you, he loves Jesus, man. I haven't been around a, a lot of people that, A, love Jesus. I've been around a lot of people that love Jesus, but it kind of dwindles those that love Jesus and want everybody around to see Jesus. Yeah. You know, those are, that's a great group of people a person to be around and and you know he's got two books too he's got yeah. two books yeah two wrote, or more I, I have two right now working on a third but i have 2011 we published revelation to transformation mm -hmm. which was really a book about what happens when someone spends their life looking at jesus mm -hmm. versus what happens when you spend your time working on yourself mm -hmm. and i spent a lot of time working on myself I mean, so i felt too. like an expert in that area we didn't get anywhere <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i worked on myself but then began to see that the more you declare jesus the more you see jesus the more true inner transformation takes place that's what that book is about and then in 2013 i published between the pieces mm -hmm. what really happened at the cross if you got anything out of our, our section our our little 30 minute or whatever you and i did on uh the covenants mm -hmm read between the pieces the, mm -hmm. the, all the Zechariah material including a lot of stuff we didn't get into is in that book that's a book about the covenant mm -hmm. what was Jesus doing and it's more than he was dying on the cross for my sins right as great as that mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. if that's all you know about the cross Jesus died on the cross for my sins you have a very very short understanding of the cross mm -hmm. it was so much more right. and not to take anything away from him right. dying for your sins but man he gave you everything right you're right. And you so know, that's what that book is about. You know, brother, that's that's how I lived almost my whole Christian experience. I thought that Jesus died for my sins, and I really didn't believe that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know what you're saying. <laughs> I did really didn't believe that, and and I never knew how much more actually went on. Yeah. Went on there. So I read both the books. Loved them, man. Praise I got them marked all marked all up. Yeah. Uh, in fact, my wife Brandy's reading uh, Revelation Transformation right awesome. now. Awesome. So, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of books I, I recommend to her, uh, but that's definitely one of them. Oh, so, good, good. So if you can get your hands on it. Yeah, they're them. available on our website. Amen. Praise God. Lord. We want to get back into some word. Uh, in our last video segment, we were uh, talking about covenant, uh, old covenant, new covenant, uh, and, and really just uh, the subject of seeing the old Mosaic covenant compared to the new covenant compared to the Abrahamic covenant. And the way I understand it, the Abrahamic covenant uh, or the new covenant is really the fulfillment of the Abrahamic covenant. So uh, throughout my Christian experience, 
myself for years, I never could see a distinction between the old covenant and the new covenant. I would, even in my early days of preaching, I would get up and I would preach a second Chronicles 714. You know, I would say Jesus loves you, yeah. but you got to turn from sin before he'll hear you yeah. or, or things like that. And why did I do that? Because I really didn't understand covenant. Amen. I, I agree. And I would interject and say that the way I, I was just like you, couldn't really figure out the difference between those two. And the way I understood and taught it, John should have said, behold the Lamb of God that takes away animal sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Because the new covenant that I believed was exactly like the old covenant, mm -hmm. except mm -hmm. Jesus died instead of sheep. Yeah. Everything else is the same. You do, you do yeah. it exactly like they did as a good Jew, but now you have Jesus, so you're better than a Jew because right. yeah. you can brag that we got Jesus. So behold the Lamb of God that takes away animal sacrifice because mm -hmm. yeah. he didn't, sure didn't take away sin. Right. Yeah. So he, what did he do? He took away the need to kill lambs. And right. so for me, the new covenant became a real celebration for sheep. Mm-hmm. Sheep ought to be throwing yeah. a party yeah. because they don't die anymore because someone yeah. died for them. Yeah. Now, you can see, of course, that's humorous and that's silliness, but I didn't, I'm like you. I didn't, what's the that's difference? Powerful. You know I what? Know. I actually mentioned that along those lines to my wife a couple weeks ago. Uh, I was speaking of a ministry and I said, you know, the, 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 the thing is, I just feel in my spirit that all they see between Old Covenant and New Covenant uh, is the fact that there's no more animal sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And that was how I saw it yep. for years. Yep. I didn't really under, honestly, I didn't know how bad it was to be under the whole law. And yeah. If you had asked me, I wouldn't have really been able to uh, explain to you how bad it would have been shut up under that law. And it was just, it was more than animal sacrifices. There were so many things more, you know, uh, in addition to that, that, you know, that's how I looked at it, and that's how I'm afraid many ministries look at it. It's the difference in ministering death and ministering life. If you minister from the place of death, which is what we're talking about, where Jesus' death has replaced Lamb's death, mm -hmm. and that's the whole new covenant is Jesus' death, the sheep don't die anymore, then you're going to minister death mm -hmm. because people are going to only be conscious of dying. Mm -hmm. they're, on, they're going to be challenged to die like Jesus mm -hmm. died. No, not on a literal cross, but on a spiritual one. Mm -hmm. yeah. And die like Jesus died. But if you minister from an empty tomb, mm -hmm. yeah, come on. you're ministering from a place mm -hmm. of life. Mm -hmm. Christ is not still dead. Right. Christ, why does Paul emphasize the cross in 1 Corinthians 1? Why does he say we, glory, we preach the mm -hmm. cross? Because he's dealing with a Jewish community that don't yeah. believe it even happened. Right, right. Much yeah. less believe it yeah. was powerful. That's right. And so Paul says, you know what I'm going to preach to you? Mm -hmm. That he died. Mm -hmm. Because you don't believe he died. Right. For, for some of you, that's foolishness. Mm -hmm. For others of you, that's a stumbling block. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to deal with both of you yeah. and your stumbling block and your foolishness. He right. really did die. Mm -hmm. yeah. And here's what that looked like. By the time he gets to 2 Corinthians, he's fully developed the doctrine. Mm -hmm. He's seasoned them for it. Mm -hmm. So he gets to the fifth chapter and mm -hmm. says, we thus conclude. We thus conclude if yeah. one man died, all have yeah. died. And if any man is in Christ, right. he's a new creation. Right. Old creation. things pass away, all things become mm -hmm. new. And now has been committed unto us the ministry of reconciliation, I mean, telling yeah. the world that God does not count yeah. their sins against them. Wow. And I'm telling you, be reconciled to God. All wow. you need to do is wake up to that reality. Now that's a new covenant message from the point of life. Mm-hmm. Versus the new covenant message from the point of death. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and, and and I was I was in that uh, new covenant message from the point of death. Yeah, I've been there. Perspective. I've been there. It's 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 rough, but you know, it's it's so wonderful when you see that new covenant when you can when you can clearly see an old covenant, new covenant. You can see in the Old Testament where you see things that really don't apply to us, right? Mm -hmm. It's for us, but it doesn't apply to us because we're not under that covenant anymore. I'm under a covenant administration of life, of the Spirit, where I'm blessed, not because of my goodness. No, I'm blessed because of the goodness Amen. of Jesus Christ. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I pray that people can see that. I think that, uh, you know, in our last segment, you were kind of talking about Galatians 3 a little bit and the seed. Yeah. You know, you made, you made mention that the seed uh, was... Christ and we know that because Paul specifically mm -hmm. he could have went plural there 
Yeah. But he went singular. You want to you kind of... Well, he, he could have, and he even does, to show you that he that it's not that way. Let's read it. Galatians 3, 16. Now, to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, mm. and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to your seed who is Christ. Now, I like the New King James here because it puts a proper noun it makes seed into a proper noun, mm -hmm. capital S, mm -hmm. his seed, because the, the translators know where we're going. Right, and right. where we're going is the seed's Christ. Right. So if it's Christ, you ought to call right. it by his name. Mm -hmm. So let's assume that as we read it. Abraham and his seed. So let's insert Christ. To Abraham and to Christ mm -hmm. were the promises made. He mm -hmm. doesn't say and to men, mm -hmm. seeds, mm -hmm. the seeds of right. Israel. He doesn't say to Judah or mm -hmm. Uh, Issachar or Dan or right. Gilead. He yeah. says to mm -hmm. Christ and as of many, but as of one and to your seed who yeah. is Christ. Christ. So what God was doing in the Abrahamic covenant was determining to bless planet earth mm -hmm. through one man, mm -hmm. not through one nation. Mm -hmm. That's right. He was determining to bless them through one man. So when we see all through you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Mm -hmm. And we go, well, that's Israel. The whole world's mm -hmm. going to be blessed through Israel. They were mm -hmm. blessed through what came out of Israel. Mm -hmm. But the seed that was that's that right. promise was made to was not right. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all right. the 12 tribes of Israel. And it wasn't to Joshua right. and to the judges mm -hmm. or to David. It was to Jesus. That's right. Paul grabs a concept that had never been thought of in the history of the mm -hmm. world. What you're reading in Galatians mm -hmm. 3.16 yep. has never been said before. Mm -hmm. This is the stuff that gets Paul killed. Mm -hmm. he, right. he's, you talk That's right. about outside the establishment. That's you right. talk about a heretic. That's right. Yeah. To his peer group, mm -hmm. he's the ultimate heretic. Because he looks at his own people mm -hmm. and says, we for so long have boasted mm -hmm. that God has made promises to us. And Paul said, I'm here to bust your bubble. Right. He never made a single promise right. to us as the natural Israel. Mm -hmm. He made a promise That's to right. one seed. That's right. And that seed was not Abraham. That's right. That seed was That's Christ. Right. And now if you want right. what we've all bragged about having, mm -hmm. you're not going to get it because you can trace your lineage back to Reuben. Mm -hmm. You're going to get it because you put faith in Christ. Right. Look at verse yeah. uh, 20. Six, mm -hmm. you're all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Oh, right. There's neither Jew. Oh, I love this. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite verses yeah. in the Bible. Galatians 3, 28. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female. You're all one in Christ. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. Oh, he just says it straight up right there. And your heirs according to what? The promise. promise. He says it straight up. That's right. He said, so it's only Christ that gets the benefits. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Boy, that gets us into hot water because <laughs> yeah. people go, well, what do you think about natural Israel? I think it's probably a great place to visit. Yeah, a great place to visit. Yeah. I, I've never been there, yeah. well, but I don't think that they are the chosen people of God. That's right. Because Peter says we are mm -hmm. a chosen people. That's right. A holy nation. That's right. A royal priesthood. And who are the we? It's those that are in Christ. That's right. Paul closes Galatians. Galatians 6, verse 15. In Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision circumcision. means anything, anything. Yeah. but a new, new creation. creation. What did we quote from 2 Corinthians yeah. 5? Yeah. If any man be in Christ, right. what is he? He's a new, new creation. creation. You can add to that. If any man be in Christ, not only is he a new creation, but he's Abraham's seed. Yeah. Yeah. And if he's Abraham's seed, he's an heir according to promise. Right. He's not an heir according to his blood. That's he's not right. an heir according to his genealogical record. He's not an heir according to who his daddy was. Right. He's an heir according to faith in Christ. Right. And this is the real sink yeah. buster in verse 16. And as many walk according to this rule. What rule? Yeah. The rule of the verse creation. 15. That if you're in Christ, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you're circumcised That's or right. not. And That's for right. those that don't know what that means, they go, why do you mention circumcision? I think we miss this sometimes. Yeah, people people yeah, go, circumcision? Yeah. Jews were circumcised. Mm -hmm. That's what made you a recipient of the promise. That's so right. at eight days old, your boy was circumcised. Mm -hmm. Why? If we can get slightly graphic for yeah. a moment. Because yeah. the seed of a man mm -hmm. passed through the seal of circumcision, mm -hmm. thus passing daddy's promise onto his kids. Mm -hmm. That's why God had the boy circumcised. 
so that when they reproduced, mm -hmm. they would pass seed through that sign. Mm -hmm. Paul comes along and says, forget it. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I don't yeah. care if you circumcise your kids or right. not, because it doesn't avail anything. Only being a new creation. And if you walk according to this rule, peace mm -hmm. and mercy be upon them. The Israel, Israel of, of God. God. Galatians 616. Who's the Israel of God? Those who are new creations. Well, you know, he hit it. We'll go back to Galatians 3.28. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female before you are all one in Christ Jesus. That's the true Israel of God. Amen. The I mean, ultimate level ground it, at it, the foot of the cross. Paul in Galatians 3 and on absolutely bust up. That's my dad, one of his favorite words. <laughs> he bust up so much theology that I was raised with. Yeah. And and we would have we would have we would have read this and shouted the house down. But really what what it's saying here goes against a lot of what I what I thought about, you know, who was Israel. You know, and and I want to read this. Jesus dealing with religious people in John 8:37 uh uh basically the same idea. It's the same idea. He says I know that, I mean, let me start at verse 31, 831. It says, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants. Mm -hmm. And just notice that we are Abraham's descendants and have ne never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, who, who, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin and a, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Verse 37, powerful. He says, oh, I know that you're Abraham's descendants. I know you're of the flesh of Abraham. Yeah, yeah. I know that. But you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have seen with your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, but if you were Abraham's children... See, Jesus said, oh, I know you have the lineage, yeah. but that don't make you part of the covenant. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. got to be a son. you got to be a child. Yeah, and yeah, Galatians yeah. 3 is the same idea. You have to be in Christ to be a son, a child yeah. of Abraham. Yeah. Physical, I'm going to say it like this, and I hope I don't offend anybody. God's not a racist. God's not a racist. Amen. He doesn't choose one race over another just because of who your daddy is or what blood's in your veins. He chooses you based on one thing, one new covenant truth. Are you in Christ? Are you in Christ? If you're in Christ, you're pleasing to the Father. Yeah. Amen. I Power. think you, tra you could trace it all the way back. I love that, yeah. by the way. Uh, you can trace it all the way back to where God says, and I'm going to make a great nation of you. I, if they bless you, I'm going to bless them. If they yeah. curse you, I'm going to curse you. Always substitute Jesus because the promises were to, to, mm -hmm. to the seed. Mm-hmm. So wherever Jesus is blessed, there's the blessing. Amen. Wherever the Jesus is cursed, that's, there's where lies the curse. Mm -hmm. Which makes Galatians 3 even more powerful where Paul says, curses every man that hangs on a tree for yeah. Christ hath been cursed. cursed. Redeemed yeah. you from the curse of the law. He's already bore the curse. Yeah. We take that into natural Israel and we think we need a geopolitical solution for what's going on in the Middle East because we're afraid what if somebody curses Israel then right. they're cursed. But that was against Christ. Right. Christ has already bore right. the curse. On our behalf, that's we've right. been freed even from that. That's right, man. That's powerful. And really, you know, today with with the, uh, you know, I'm, I don't really get in a lot of politics uh, whenever we do any type of preaching or whatever. But so many people look at Israel over there and they say, hey, we got to, you know, treat Israel a certain way. My, my position on that is let's treat everybody that way. Amen. That's not just one. But they'll say, you know, because if we don't do that for Israel, God's going to curse us. And. I don't see any of that in the New Testament, by the way. I don't see any writer, you know, stating yeah. something of that nature. But the disconcerting yeah. thing, this is as political as I'll get on this. The disconcerting thing to me about the way the American church treats Israel is if Israel dropped an atomic bomb on Washington, D.C. today, mm -hmm. the American church would get up Sunday and say, must be God's judgment. We can't fight back. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong with that. Right. With that mentality. Right. And and. Again, it's not any it's not an anti Israel stance. Right, not at all. It's it's I love how you said it. It's anti thinking God for one over the That's other. Right. If Paul brought he didn't bring the Jew down and he didn't bring the Gentile up. Right. He just put us all in the same place. Right. He said there's neither he doesn't say Jews and Gentiles are equal. Right. This is important. He doesn't say Gentiles and Jews are equal. He says there's neither 
a Jew, that's nor a Gentile. It's not that God de-elevates right. one and elevates it. He says they don't exist. Right. In God's economy, in the right. Mosaic economy, they very much exist. Right. Right. In God's kingdom economy, right. they don't exist. God doesn't recognize one over the other or one as the other. It's just like men and women. He says there's not a man, there's not a woman. He doesn't say women are the same as men. Men are the same as women. He says the, the distinction mm -hmm. between one being better or one being worse doesn't exist in the Father right. anymore. There's neither slave nor free. Yeah. It's not that the slave's been elevated right. to the position of the master. It's that in the eyes of the Father, those things don't exist. Right. The Father deals outside of our economy. He deals right. outside of our system. We have so been delivered, brother, from that system that Paul would write in Colossians 2, that since you have died with Christ, why do you put yourself under the basic elementary principles yeah. of the world? Which are what? Yeah. Touch not, Touch taste not, not mm -hmm. handle not. Mm -hmm. So Paul says, yeah. if you're really dead with Christ, yeah. why would you go back to a system of externals right. the same way the world does? Right. And man, I spent years in the ministry preaching externals. Mm -hmm. Me too. Hey, I'm going to yeah. tell you what you need to do today. If you want more of God, you need to stop watching this. Yeah. You need to start doing this. And every one of them were touch not, taste not, handle not. And Paul yeah. said, if you really died in Christ, mm -hmm. why would you go back to right. governing your life based upon what you do or don't do? It's right. why he says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. It's not That's what right. you put in your mouth. Right. It's who you are inside. That's right. That's right. You know, I want to piggyback off that, what you just said, Second Chronicles 7, 14. And I say that because so many, and I, and I know it's a revelation when they get it, I keep saying it. Second Chronicles 7, 14 clearly says, if, if you do good, God will forgive you, God will hear you. I'm just paraphrasing, yep, right? Yep. God will hear you, uh, God, God will forgive you. And that is so old covenant thinking, yep. you know? And, and under, our, our, under our covenant, again, we're blessed because of Christ and he's taken our curse. And I, you know, I just feel like there could be some that, that's watching, you know, and, and, and I hope they hear the externals, as, as Pastor Paul just said, as he quoted Paul, it's not going to get you anywhere. It's not, it's, and Second Chronicles 7, 14 sounds really good, man. It sounds a really good message to preach. Uh, and it sounds really good to preach to an old covenant people. Sure. You know, but a new covenant people, we're dead with Christ. We don't live our life by rules and regulations. You know, you said it last night. We're, we're governed. We live we lived by the Spirit. Romans eleven six. If it's by grace, then it's no longer of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. If it's of works, it's no longer grace. Otherwise, work is no longer work. How can we make grace no longer grace? How could we mm -hmm. take the grace of God and make it no longer grace? Well, I saw it done all the time, and I helped do it. Get up and sing Amazing Grace. That's wonderful. Great grace. Didn't preach that. Mm -hmm. Didn't preach that grace was amazing. Yeah. Grace was temporary. In fact, I think I said this last night. I got to where I got a little bit jealous of sinners. Mm. Because, man, they could get grace like nobody's yeah. business. If you came into the church drunk, high, beat your wife, just got out of prison, grace was free, man. Everybody would yeah. rally around you and smile and pat you on mm -hmm. the back when you came to the altar and got saved. That was about as good as it got. Mm -hmm. Because from there on... You would earn anything you got from the Lord. And Paul said, if you want to make grace not grace, put works in it. Mm -hmm. Because the moment it's works, it's not grace, grace. any longer. Mm -hmm. The moment, if you want to make works not works, how do you do it? Go towards grace. Yeah. Run towards it being free. Right. Amen. So, so contrary to our human nature you yeah. know, to, walk, to walk that way. You know, I was kind of sharing with you Galatians, kind of, you know, not venturing off, but same, same topic yeah. here. Galatians 4, Paul uh, tells us that we're like Isaac. We're like a child of promise. Yeah, and, you yeah. Know, and for a long time, and it really, it's, it's an illustration of grace, of the new covenant, where our hands are really off. Mm -hmm. You know, for the longest time, uh, even understanding the message of grace, the finished work, I, I struggled with that. I didn't really understand how did I relate to Isaac? How am I a child of promise like Isaac? Mm -hmm. and, and recently I was studying the scriptures and I felt the Holy Spirit lead me you know, Isaac never had a chance to call Abraham daddy if God didn't work. God supernaturally worked in Sarah so Isaac could be born, hence, and then call Abraham daddy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, that's how we are. Yeah. If God doesn't get involved with us and rebirth us through the born-again experience, 
we can never call Abraham daddy, which in Galatians 3, we You're have the authority to do. to do. So, you know, and again, new covenant, old covenant. New covenant, I had nothing to do with that. It's grace. It's God at work. Mm -hmm. I can't put my hands, you know, in, 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 in it at all. I just stand back, praise him, thank him for it, and live that reality out. Absolutely. And, you know, I like to say a lot of times if you, you want to watch God work by promise, you're going to have to be patient. Allow the Holy Spirit. You know, we're seeing people come into the, to the new covenant and they're coming into the knowledge of God's grace. And I'm talking about people who've been in church. Mm -hmm. And they're having the grave clothes of religion just stripped off of them like Lazarus raised from the dead. We're pulling off these grave clothes. Guilt, shame, condemnation, past religion, performance. And we get, if we're not careful, we'll get a little bit upset that they don't change fast mm -hmm. enough. One of the things that I've noticed is that people become discouraged at the slow pace of change. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit doesn't move people to change as quickly as we would like them to. And there is a way to get people to change their performance, and that's to threaten them. Mm -hmm help them move in the flesh mm -hmm. and if you get people to move in the flesh you can get temporary change but you can't get real heart change you can't get people to show the change that they need and so i love the story of hagar and sarah because here's abraham who was promised to see a, ch a child mm -hmm. but he looks at sarah and she's 90 and he goes that's not gonna happen yeah. i mean she's yeah. 90 uh even back then 90s 90 mm -hmm. you know yeah and abram says well it's not going to work that way but here's hagar She's 22, probably 23. Yeah. Um, and Abram, with Sarah's permission, goes, got, yeah. all I got to do is have a kid. Right. Yeah. So he goes, and what happens? He sleeps with Hagar, and somewhere around nine months later, he gets himself an Ishmael. Yeah. And it takes years to get his Isaac. And what I like to say to people is, look, if you want instantaneous results, Use the works of the flesh. Mm -hmm. You'll get, you can get people to change the way they act right. for you. They come into your church and they don't live the way you like for them to live. Yeah. Throw some fireball flames of hell at them yeah. and, and scare them and put fear in them. Motivate them by yeah. fear and get them to perform yeah. for you. And they'll jump on the treadmill of your church and they'll work until you go, man, look at them. They're yeah. growing. Yeah. Yeah. They're not growing. They're just yeah. faking it really mm -hmm. well for you. Right. Nothing down inside of their heart has right. changed. The pace of change by the Holy Spirit might not please us, but mm -hmm. we've got to be patient and allow the Holy Spirit because they are new creations. Right. They're not being made into new right. creations. They are, are already new creations, but they don't know it. Right. And no one's telling them. Right. And if it's right. not reinforced, this is why Paul says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed how? No, no, your mind. By renewing your That's mind. Right. He doesn't say get saved That's again. Right. You're already saved. Right. You need to renew your mind right. to realize that you are what the Bible says that you are. Right. And as you do that, you begin to have come out of you the Isaac that's mm -hmm. promised. That's right. And I think we've lost patience with the Holy Spirit because he doesn't move on our clock and he never will mm -hmm. because it's right. his thing, not ours. Mm -hmm. And we push flesh and the works and the performance. And that's why we got a bunch of Ishmaels running around mm -hmm. in the right. church. They're, I don't want to try to define what that looks like. I think people know it's just an illustration. Mm -hmm. Paul was using it as one too. But we have these... The, the works of the flesh being manifest and that it should never had to be That's right. to be. Amen. You know, and a lot of times as us as ministers, as we begin to really have our eyes open to the message of grace, you know, it's the enemy. I feel like maybe it's our own self and our ears saying we put that pressure to see people change at the pace that we want them change. Absolutely. And it's in our ear that, you know, these people are taking this message and, they're taking it as a license to, to sin. And, you know, I just want to encourage anyone who's preaching grace that the only thing that's going to truly transform anybody is Jesus. Not us affecting, uh, you know, how people live. Do's and don'ts. Yeah. Rules, regulations. Great example here recently at our church. I had a friend of mine who's been coming to church and, and really uh, a childhood friend that uh, if, if I saw him 15 years ago, I would never expect him to be coming to a church much less when i was going to he just didn't look like the churchy type of person he's been coming been coming been coming and man just seeing god transforming and it's not at the pace that the religious preacher wants mm -hmm. but it's at the pace the holy spirit is working and yeah. it's just you know it, and i have to ask the lord lord spirit you lead me let me get out of the way it's on your clock it ain't on mine 
That's a powerful word you said, man. That's well, good. I'll piggyback on what you said to, to grace preachers and ministers, and I'll say this. If no one is accusing you of saying that you can do whatever you want, you're probably not preaching it right. Mm, amen. That's right. <laughs> and the reason for that, not that you're yeah. saying that they yeah. can do whatever they want. Paul dealt with that in Romans. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's Romans 3 where he says, uh, it has been slanderously, slanderously reported that we have said do evil so that good may come. Yeah. Why was that slanderously reported? Mm -hmm. How are you going to slanderously report that yeah. a guy said, yeah. preach, do evil so that good may come? Mm -hmm. Unless something he said... Mm -hmm. Taken through the lens of the wrong covenant mm -hmm. sounds like right. do evil so that good may come. And then right. you run away from his meeting and go, oh, you're not going to believe what, the, yeah. what Paul said. They yeah. wouldn't have called him the apostle Paul. Yeah. You're not going to believe what Saul mm -hmm. said. He said do evil so good may come. Yeah. He gets to the end of the fifth chapter of Romans. He's so excited. Yeah. He goes, where iniquity doth abound, grace yeah. doth much more abound. Yeah. And then you see him start the very next verse and he says, so what shall we say then? Yeah. Right. Do we continue in sin that grace yeah, may abound? Right. Why would he say that? Right. Unless he knew right. that somebody would hear him say, "That's right," where iniquity abounds, grace does much more abound, and he thought, "I know what my critics are going to say. Yep. They're going to say I went too far. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and deal with it again. <laughs> Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Of course we yeah. don't. Yeah. And so I say to you, yeah. if they're saying, "Oh, that guy's saying you can sin, do whatever you want," congratulations, you're in good company. You're preaching the gospel of grace, grace. that Paul preached, but don't back down. That's right. And just continue to, to show Jesus and make him lovely. And you will occasionally from time to time have to answer, God forbid, mm -hmm. how can we that are dead mm -hmm. to sin continue any longer therein? Yeah, there was a, there was a Christian writer that uh, I was reading. One of, he's a, I think he's passed on now. But, but he understood the message of grace. And he said that uh, if when you walk off the platform as a minister, and when you walk off, and I've been there, man, and I know when I say this, you, you may have heard it. When you walk off, if your first thought is, did I just tell them people they can sin all they want? See, because that's the first, whenever you preach Jesus, mm -hmm. when it's truly all about Jesus, the first thing you question yourself is, am I telling them it's okay to sin? Why? Because you didn't give them rules and regulations. Yeah. You gave them Jesus. Yeah. And, and really... I, every minister that, I, that I've talked to that preaches, the, 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 I'm not talking about a mixture of grace. I'm talking about grace. I, they've said the same thing. You oh, know, yeah. You know, in your mind, you say, yeah. did, did I, Lord, did I say, did I lead them to believe that? <laughs> and then, why, why are you thinking that? Because you're giving them Jesus. Yeah. You're giving them Jesus. You made him look so much like he really was, mm -hmm. which is where he would walk into a room with sinners. And you got to wonder, did Jesus ever walk out and go, did I? Make that sinner think it was okay yeah. to still be a sinner. Because yeah. <laughs> you don't have a sermon in the Gospels where Jesus yeah. goes into a prostitute yeah. and goes, now let's lay the law down yeah. on you yeah. people sleeping around. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. you don't have it. Yeah. And so you got to wonder, and I know I'm being facetious yeah. about it, but, but yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. It's awesome, man. Jesus is so wonderful, the new covenant. You know, I, I hope today, I know that uh, you take the things that we say and, you just look at the scripture. You know, I think that uh, if you filter it all through Jesus, you yeah. know, you'll be able to see the difference of, of the covenants. This isn't an overnight uh, revelation. Uh, it's a journey. That's one of your favorite words, journey. It right? is. It's yeah. a journey that journey. it never ends. I see more Jesus today than I did Please yesterday. filter it. Please filter it through the word. Please filter it through the spirit. Mm -hmm. If you can't have a revelation... Because your favorite preacher hasn't had it, mm -hmm. you might be in a cult. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you take what your favorite preacher says as the gospel truth, even if there's a conflicting mm -hmm. verse in your spirit, you might be in a cult. Mm -hmm. If you can't disagree with that leader without being cut off as if you're not part of the family, mm -hmm. you might be in a cult. Mm hmm. I'm going yeah. down the cult Amen. list here. Yeah. And I do yeah. this because I've been there. Right. Me and too. I watch people who are just waiting on the next hero. Mm -hmm. If by leaving the hero you're in, you would simply attach yourself to another one and swallow hook, line, and sinker everything they give you, you have mm -hmm. a cult mentality. Mm -hmm. It's yep. the blind leading the blind. Yep. Listen, man, we have to get freed from this That's dependency right. on our favorite hero. That's right. Amen. On their book, their sermon, their look. We've got it down to where we try to walk like them, dress like right. them, act like them, answer like mm -hmm. them. Look, 
when is it going to be where Jesus is That's enough? Right. Amen, brother. That's good. Amen. So please filter this. Amen. Through the Holy Spirit and through the Word. That's right. Take it and devour it. That's right. And as my dad said, to quote, you quoted yours, I'll quote mine, <laughs> eat the chicken and spit out the bones. That's right. I mean, if That's you right. can't take the whole meal, you, nobody right. asked you to swallow That's the right. bones. That's so if right. there's stuff in there that you go, well, I can take nine out of ten. But boy, he said that one yeah. thing. And we're so yeah. predisposed if we hear one thing we don't like, we just go, well, forget yeah. it. I'm not watching him again. Yeah. And yeah. I don't understand that. I, I used to be there, yeah, so I guess I, I can there. understand it, mm -hmm. but I can't understand it now. What was that word you used? Maybe it was the first session of this session about how you're not stagnant. There was a word you used, how you're growing. Uh, I guess for me, I, I, I am so, I, I pause now anytime I say I disagree with something because I've disagreed with so many things in the past yeah. that I, I've kind of come full circle. I said I'm not absolutely convinced because yes. I don't always try to deal in absolutes. Yeah. 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 Just Jesus died and he rose yeah. from the dead. I'm absolutely positive <laughs> that he lives in my heart. Outside of that, I'm not yeah. willing to go to, the, to, to death mm -hmm. with you right. on a whole lot of absolutes. Yeah. And I think we're dangerous mm -hmm. when we get to that place. That's right. We're immovable objects. Mm -hmm. And when we're immovable, we're not growing. Right. We're not growing. And which is, man, that's powerful. That that is so true. Whenever we we don't when we think we have it all together, there's there, you're not growing. There's no room for growth. Can I give you one more? Go ahead. Earmark of a cult. <laughs> if you can say now, if brother or sister so and so got up and said it, I'd believe it. Mm -hmm. You're in a cult. You're a cult. That's right. That's right. I know we weren't on yeah. cults. No, but it's, but it's, I just felt like yeah. throwing that out there because yeah. I think there's just this idea that uh, we were so confined to one voice, one sound, one style. And I think you and I can only yeah. say it because we've been there. been there. And we know a lot of people that have mm -hmm. been there. And I think people know a lot of people right. that have been there. Yeah. And maybe you're there. The biggest really slap in the face to the Holy Spirit and to the, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is when we think there's one voice and one church on planet Earth that has God's yeah. ear. Yeah. I mean, that is a slap in the church's face to think that and I know we didn't plan to go down this, but I'm going to say it to think that one group can have truth and everyone else is is excluded from that truth or, or wrong. That's well, Steve, I think it comes back to this idea that God blesses us based on our performance. Mm -hmm. And in the, and in this case, he blesses us based on our right doctrine. Mm -hmm. So if we have the right doctrine, then we'll have the right mm -hmm. version of God. And I think we need to reexamine the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Um you look at the disciples who did not have all the right doctrine. Right. To me, I always kind of start and stop at the resurrection. Yeah. You've got Sunday morning resurrection. Jesus' tomb is empty. The stone's been rolled away. There's no body. Mm -hmm. The linens are folded. And, the, and Mary comes to the garden and asks the gardener, the gardener, yeah. where have they taken his body so that yeah. I may go and own it? It's not a gardener. It's Jesus. Right. And she doesn't walk up to the gardener and say, did you see him resurrect? Yeah. yeah. She does not have the doctrine of resurrection. Right. She right. doesn't even believe he resurrected. She right. believes his body's been stolen. And if if modern yeah. preaching and teaching were there, yeah. we would have said, disqualified. Yep, disqualified. Gardener cannot reveal himself to her. Yep. Yep. But I'll instead, look. the gardener says, yeah. Mary. Yeah. It's me. It's me. Yeah. Now, how was she equipped for that? Yeah. She wasn't. She didn't have resurrection faith. Right. Her doctrine of resurrection was lacking, mm -hmm. <laughs> and yet, revelation. Mm -hmm. Jesus appears that night to the disciples who were huddled together in a room. They don't believe he's alive. Mm -hmm. I mean, they heard it this morning, but my point is, why do we think that until we get everything right, God's not going to move? And mm -hmm. every person I know that believes that will tell you what they used to believe. Mm -hmm. They'll go, I, I used to believe this. Yeah. And they know God was blessing them when they yeah. used to believe that stuff. Right. They know he was. Right. So why would you think that until everybody agrees with you, they can't be in the favor of God? I don't buy that. I don't no. believe it at all. Me neither. I've said this too to, to grace places and people go, well, I can't go back to that church because they're mixture. And I go, look, listen, follow the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and where you go. And I stood in a church in Alabama and I said, how many of you here will raise your hand and admit that you got saved in a church that preaches mixture? One hundred percent. That's right. And I said, now, why are we spending all of our time bashing that's right. every other church in town? That's right. When every blasted one of us got saved. That's right. Well, how did we even get saved? That's right. Because Jesus. That's right. That's because Jesus reason. moved in that place. That's right. And we found him and he found us that's right. because he has an uncanny ability to find people 
at noon at the well that Come should on. have been there at 5 a.m. Yeah. He has yeah. an uncanny ability yeah. to be on the right street corner when they throw a pro, uh, yeah. a, an adulteress at his feet. Yeah. He has an amazing ability to pass by a woman with the issue of blood. Yeah. He finds people in the middle of bad doctrine. Now, yeah. do we want to stay in yeah. bad doctrine? No, no, right. but we've got to get out of this mentality. God won't move that's right. if we don't have it all right. If that's yeah. the case, he's never he's going never to move. move. He's never going to move. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's, it's so clear. You know, I've heard you mention that before, the resurrection morning, right? Yeah. So here's a woman, not doctrine, not right. Yeah. But what does Jesus do? He reveals himself. Yeah. Clearly laying a principle. That's a principle. Yeah. That if you don't have all doctrine, it's not, Jesus is not going to, re how are you going to get out of that doctrine without Jesus revealing himself Amen. to you? Amen. So he's got to reveal himself. Listen, if we'll just, if we'll make Jesus look as good as he is. And he looks good. He looks good. He looks good. Then, you know, the, 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 the common denominator in the, the church is a mixture where I got saved and the churches who, who are preaching God's, you know, radical grace, the common denominator. At some point, they both preach Jesus. Yep. <laughs> you know, at and some that's point. it. That's yeah. our foundation. Paul said, don't let anybody build on any other foundation. Right. And and what is the foundation? Jesus. Jesus. I don't want to make it sound like we're backing off of the message of grace mm -hmm. and going, no, I'm right. not at all. But I, I do see a disturbing trend of, and it just reminds me of my past too much. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is wrong. Mm -hmm. We got to get the, you got to go to, and I, I hear people say things like, oh, brother so-and-so, does he have the message? Yeah. And they go, what do you mean does he have the message? Right. Does he have the message of grace? And that's so cultish to me that I go, ugh, something cr just cringes inside of me. And I go, well, he has Jesus. Yeah. I mean, isn't that a great place to start? Yeah, I mean, right. he knows Jesus. That's right. I came out of that. I'm, I'm honestly with with the Holy Spirit. So I'm never going back. To Amen. That. I'm never going back to looking at. Uh, it, I'm I'm not going to look at what everybody else has wrong. I'm going to simply look at Jesus and say, you know what? Everyone here needs a fresh new revelation. Paul White needs a revelation of Jesus. Steve Tan Amen. needs a revelation. We all need Jesus. Let's preach Jesus. And you know what? I believe these churches are a mixture. The more we preach Jesus, don't bash them. You know what? They're going to see Jesus. And where you are, do you love Jesus less mm, love than it. you used to? Mm -mm, do you it. sin more yeah, than mm -mm, you used to? Nope. The, the, the reality is it has an ex it's exploded in my heart mm -hmm. about Jesus. Do you want to know what imploded? Do you want to know what I lost? The desire to build a ministry. Mm -hmm. The yeah. desire to be big. The desire to get a name. The desire to get you to know me. Yeah. That's what I lost yeah. when I started preaching grace. What I gained was an increased love of him. Mm -hmm. I want to see him in the Old Testament. I want to mm -hmm. see him in the New Testament. Yeah. I want to see him in your life. Yeah. So for those that talk about motivation, uh, I have, I live by 1 Thessalonians 4, 9. I have, I aspire to lead a quiet life, mm -hmm. minding my own business, working with my own hands. I didn't even know that verse was in the Bible mm -hmm. until I began to understand his grace. And I watched the Apostle Paul who said, I don't really want to be anybody. Right. That yeah. I may know him. Yeah. Right. So I'm done with spotlight, big platform, green room ministry. Mm -hmm. Usher me in seven songs into the worship so I don't have right. to shake hands with the peons. Because God knows if my elbow rubs up against sister so-and-so in the lobby, it'll take the edge off my anointing. <laughs> I'm so tired of the yeah. cockiness and the pride that comes with performance. Mm -hmm. Me too. Because you put on an air that you're making it. Mm -hmm. So no one will see the fragility of your own walk. Right. Let's be fragile. Right. Amen. Let's show the insecurities. Right. Let's show the pain. Right. Let's show the moments where we're not at our best so that Christ can be glorified. Yeah. We love to quote it, but we don't love to live, live it. it when we're yeah. weak. Strong. He's yeah, strong, that's right. but we don't want to show anybody that right. we're weak because then we're yeah. weak. Who cares what people right. think? If you're weak, then you show the strength of who he is. That's Amen. the message of grace. Amen, dude. That is good. That is good. Well, man, I'm so glad you could be with us today. Enjoyed it, man. I just want to say this. Uh, we're going to try to, we're not going to try. We're going to get you back down here. <laughs> All right. Do some more of these uh, for those that are from the area that wasn't able to make it out this weekend. We're going to have it again soon. And uh, just, so glad for the uh, relationship that we've built. You know, you I just, uh, I'm thrilled 
at what God's doing, amen, when Jesus is lifted up. Yeah. And I appreciate you, man. Thanks, man. I, I appreciate you. Thanks for being you. with us today. My amen. pleasure, truly. We'll, we'll see you soon. God bless. Remember, Jesus loves you more than you can ever imagine. God bless.